Hello everybody, my name is of course Bricky. Welcome to a long running series, a, a very old series that has been on this channel for quite some time. In fact, one of the oldest series that has been on this entire channel. I don't make a whole lot of them anymore as of recently because I've been spending a lot of time moving towards other kinds of projects. But however, this is of course Fireside Bricky. It's a no-cut commentary, completely one-on-one. -on -one. Well, one on many, but you know, for me and you, it's like a one on one kind of thing. Uh, originally inspired, uh, as many people have asked me, by FDR's fireside chats back in the good old 1930s and 40s. But either who and any who, this is, of course, a standard thing where I just play a little bit of a game, talk the entire time about God knows what, it depends on what I'd like to, and there, of course, is only one rule. That one rule is you got to have food. You got to have food. The whole point of Fireside Bricky for a very long period of time was that if you wanted to watch something while you were eating, perhaps maybe you were at work at a lunch break or whatever the reason might be, you had to go ahead and have a little bit of food with you. And with that food, you know, you can. I'm being shot at from in the ass. What? Please stop shooting me. That that is the opposite of what I asked. Okay, I was kind of hoping they would say something. It's all right. We can we can survive. Anyway, like I said, said this is just kind of one of those series. Like I've always thought, because I used to way back in the day uh, enjoy watching long form commentary videos while I had food, uh, whether they be lunch breaks or as a way to pass the time back before I did YouTube. And these were watching people like uh, Frankie on PC and uh, Soviet Womble. And a lot of people like that. Back when Daisy was a really big thing, uh, I used to watch all of them quite a bit during that period of time. So I that's kind of where the idea of the series came to be. Uh, always, always was actually quite excited to uh, to make this uh, this series. Uh, every single time I get a chance to do one, it's always nice because it gets the most compliments out of actually. Oh, very few series get as many compliments as Fireside Bricky. It tends to be uh, enjoyed quite a bit, which is why I think I'm, I'm really excited for when we actually do the podcast, because the Big Brick podcast, because it's kind of what Fireside Bricky is, you know, it's it's kind of a one on one podcast gameplay style thing. You know, there's not I mean, I, I don't cut this thing at all. I literally just take the take the file from uh, OBS, I throw it into Adobe, and then I just export it, you know? I, obviously, I, I add things like an outro and stuff, but uh, nothing like that is really kind of... It, it's it's all just semantics at that point. I always love landing at this spot, mainly because these two specific buildings always have a ton going on in them. doesn't look like anyone else dropped with me, so I think I'm going to have a, a, a kind of a slow first game. Uh, I cho I did a Fireside Bricky on Player Unknown's Battlegrounds a very long time ago. However, now that the game has actually uh, been well released, I felt it was uh, I felt it was a good good idea to go ahead and revisit it for a video. And I have actually been enjoying myself a lot more playing the game. For a while, I was not really a uh, I mean I I enjoyed the game, but I wasn't really a huge fan of the title uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I mean there was the obvious ones of the, the, the simple plague of VR games that just kind of exists, which is, uh, you know, you can't really win a VR game, uh, or not necessarily win, but if you're the kind of guy who really likes to go balls to the wall and kill people, unless you're someone like goddamn Shroud or some, you know, god-tier player, you're going to have a pretty difficult time. So the fact that I can, you know, just camp my ass off the entire game, never really, never really enjoyed that idea. Plus, third-person mode, just in general, was always kind of an annoyance because I felt like I was so constantly being killed uh, by some dude hiding behind a tree near the end of the uh, end of the game. And so, once a lot of the uh, parts of the game got fixed, uh, both whether they be certain um, optimization issues as well as a few gameplay tweaks, and now that I've actually started to get a lot better at first-person mode, wow, a sniper rifle suppressor. I decide to give it more of a shot. Now, I'm still pretty crap at this game. I'm not very good at it at all. I prefer to land in uh, areas that do not have a lot of people because I am very, 
bad at, at gunfights, especially in the beginning, because they still do need to work out that lag issue in the early game. But overall, I am actually enjoying this game significantly more, uh, significantly more uh, than I used to. And with 1.0 being released, I, it really was a good time to kind of revisit the revisit the game and see what I could dis what I could discuss, what I could see, and really talk about it a little bit more. But then again, Fireside Ricky has very rarely ever been all about the game. You know, I normally talk about the game plenty, but I also discuss a lot of things such as. Uh, you know, just the things going on in my life in the world recently and um, some interesting topics that maybe, you know, interest me more so. It, these are the kind of things I like to discuss because I've always considered Fireside Bricky to be a smaller audience. And more specifically, they've been a smaller but more my core audience. And with that being my core audience, I can discuss things that, you know, maybe I wouldn't necessarily discuss super heavily with just a random audience. Not necessarily things that I'm like scared of saying or anything, but definitely things that, you know, maybe be a little bit more sensitive of topics that are, you know, just just things you can talk about, you know, like like I could talk about. I don't like getting into YouTube drama and stuff, but I could talk about YouTube drama and stuff. You know, I could talk about things that go on. Uh, but then again, it isn't really drama if I talk about shit going on. Like, if I if I were to mention the damn Logan Paul shit, the, the first, I mean, it's not, that's just, it's not really drama, because drama, drama a lot of times um, involves two sides that are both fighting against each other. And in this case, it's really only one side versus a bunch of, like, kids who are fans, you know? And I mean, I don't blame them. You know, I was 12 years old once. I, I, I can't blame them for, for you know, believing that their hero can do no wrong. But uh, I was a young kid at a, at a point. I, I can't really, I can't really be upset about that. But uh, you know, I, I could still think it's stupid. But those are other stuff. That, that, that's a, that's a horse that's be, that's been beaten so far dead that it's really not even that interested, interesting to talk about anymore. Because we all know it's dumb. We all know everything about that it's dumb. Um, it, it always, it, one thing though that does bug me is just, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not jealous of, uh, of what the guy is and stuff, but I, I am pretty jealous of his fucking numbers and stuff. That does, that does bug me a little bit, you know? I mean, it, it, that's something that I, I will completely cop to every single time. Is it, fuck yeah, I'm jealous of what the dude, uh, the dude's numbers and crap because I don't even know why I have this pistol anymore. Because, like, oh, fuck, man. So, l lately, lately, the channel, in my opinion, has been going great. I've been having a wonderful, wonderful time with uh, with all the, the, the support that it's been getting. Uh, ever since starting and refinishing, or finishing more so, all these new series, uh, I've really been kind of not only coming into my own, but the channel's been growing a decent amount. And when I say that, I mean, like, we were moving from a, a daily rate of about mm, two, 250 to 300. Oh, that scared me. That's just the red zone. 250 to 300 subscribers. And f that, for me, was, you know, it's okay. I, I mean, of course, you know, if I... Oh, hey, Forex. If that was me about, like, you know, two years ago, I would be ecstatic. I'd be losing my shit. But, you know, that, that's just kind of how it happens with... Oh, hey. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm okay to take the M16. Mainly because it's just, I don't know, I like the M16, it's, ac it's an accurate gun. But, um, you know, I'll be obviously things change, you know. It, it, let's, if I was in the millions right now, that would be a, a crap number. And for now, I was like, that's pretty good, you know. But then we started doing really, really well. Going to like a couple thousand, you know. Like, like, a, like a thousand, or not a couple thousand, but like a thousand a day or something. You know, like huge numbers, like exciting exciting numbers and having a thousand a day is insane to me because a thousand a day is like 30,000 subs a, a month and if you do that for a year that's like 300 something thousand a, a year that that's like super awesome um and you know fucking fucking Japanese woods fuck boy over there getting around 35,000 a day you know and, and part of me is just like you know it, it's it's not good to be envious but at the same time I'm like fucking come on man you know it just kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. At the same time, though, it makes me want to really push myself and, and get and do my best to, you know, get to the top without doing some fucked up shit. You know, it kind of makes me want to be like, I'll show, I'll show him, I'll show all of them, I'll, I'll, I'll make my way to the top of YouTube in the long con, and I'll be able to, you know, 
make do my very very best by uh, by not being a being an asshole. You know, it kind of it kind of provides like a it almost provides a new sense of um, uh, what's it uh, an ambition, a, a new sense of of um, I, I guess the I'm not trying to turn the word. Not, it's not confidence, but you know, gusto makes me want to do stuff. You know, it gives uh, gives me a lot a motivation. That's the word I'm looking for. It gives me a lot of motivation. It's exciting. It's exciting shit sometimes. Then yeah, this game has been very slow. But, uh, you know, it's generally how PUBG tends to be sometimes. I really do like this first-person mode. I, I feel like my aim has slightly... It's My aim is still garbage. Get, don't get me wrong. My aim is garbage. But I feel like my aim has definitely improved ever since uh, ever since playing this this game. Or, or ever since playing this in first-person. It's kind of funny. Uh, for a while, I was um, uh, just kind of rolling through PUBG streams. Because for, for a, while, a long, long time, I watched... Literally every single episode of the H3 podcast, kind of what got me into wanting to do a podcast as well, because I was like, damn, that's really looks really fun. Um, but uh, I watched like every episode of it while I was editing because it was just really good background. And after I finished all of it, I was like, shit, I, I need something else. I need more. I need something else I can do. And so I started jumping on Twitch streams. And then the first per I mean, who's number one top tier boy is, is fucking Shroud. And uh, good old C9 Shroud there throwing PUBG with around like 50,000 viewers. Jesus H. Christ. And so I was like, you know what? I want to see what all the hubbub is about. And so I jump onto the man's stream just like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I mean, he's pretty cool and all. You know, he's, he's just, he's just kind of chill. He's just playing with his buddies. Like, I, at the time I was like, this isn't like bad. I'm just trying to understand like, what's, what's the appeal? He just seems like he's just playing with his friends, you know? I don't see what's like what's making it forty thousand, and then I see the goddamn dude get about fifteen kills in a solo game, just without breaking a goddamn sweat, for play playing for like like eight hours. Like ah ah, I see, I see. It's because he's chill and he's a fucking god. Okay, everything makes sense now. <laughs> everything makes sense now. Like, how, do, how does, does this dude do it? It's first person PUBG mode. Can you imagine the amount? Oh, I will take that. Yes, I will. Oh, man. Come on. I just. All right, fine. I'll got to do this. Ah, goodness gracious. Come on. Just swap it. Put that in there. Give me give me the goddamn car. Give, what do you mean? Not enough space. I'm OK. Give me the car. I can remove like a hundred bullets. There we go. I don't know what the hell that was all about. Okay. Cool car. But um, yeah, like that's when you figure it out, like, oh, oh, I get it now. It's because the dude's a freaking god at this game. An absolute god. And I probably should have chosen a gun. Probably should have kept my AK. Eh, I'll be fine. I don't like the AK very much. But you, I now realize like everything, and then ever since then, I was like, you know, I think because for a while I always just played PUBG in third person because I don't know, just PUBG was played in third person. I just didn't see a reason not to play it in third person. And uh, as I uh, as I played it in third person, I kept on getting killed behind trees and shit. And I was like, you know, this is dumb. I'm gonna play this in first person now. And uh, as I played it in first person, I realized my aim was starting to get better. I'm like, oh, ah, huh, this is uh. This is getting good. This this is getting better. And uh, then I kind of started to understand, like, you know, I'll never be as good as he will be, but you know, this is this is the way. This is how you do. This is the way, brother. This is the way of the devil. Sorry, that goddamn VR chat. It's so fucking funny. All those knuckles. There's just so many knuckles. <laughs> I don't know why. It's so fucking funny, man. It just gets me. Is that car supposed to be here? Oh, it's destroyed. I thought that was like an actual working car. Vaulting was an excellent change to this game. Good job on that. It works out pretty well, too. Surprisingly, I mean, mildly glitchy, but not the worst. All right. But yeah, anyway, that's just, I was just kind of thinking about that. Like, hmm, you know, I wonder more specifically what kind of, uh, you know, how. I oh, there's some gunshots. The way distance. Here comes a car. Uh-oh. 
Fuck. Oof. That was a little spooky. We good. We good. I feel like a douchebag for that, but, uh, you know, kind of just waiting on the guy, but... Eh. What happens, happens. Uh, I took a little bit of damage in the chest, but not enough for me to actually give much of a shit. Oh my. This place is turning into the red zone. That's not very good. Probably the first kill. I'm probably just gonna put two two painkill or two energy drinks instead of taking any painkillers. I feel like I would be wasting the painkillers. Oh, sounds like another car. Oh, okay, well there we go. That's a good start. Well, you know, as good a start as it's gonna be, considering. Uh, I'm gonna take your bandages real fast, just in case. All right. Well, yeah, anywho, that's just, uh, that was just the whole PUBG thing. You know, if someone told me never use uh, burst fire on the M16, and I, you know, I'm inclined to agree with them. I, I, didn't, I thought that was kind of silly. I thought it'd be better for close range to keep burst fire on, but uh, you fire about just as fast with uh, regular fire. I was kind of surprised. You know, that was uh, very wrong of me. I'm glad that I learned that. I'm glad that I didn't break anything, too. That would have really, really sucked. Oh well. We good. Safe zone's moving anyway. I got to get out of here. Hopefully no one's gonna come and shoot me in the ass. That would very much suck. That would very much suck. Ah, <sighs> good shit though. Alright, so anyway, that's what's been going on with that kind of stuff. You know, as I've been making these uh, Dead by Daylight case file videos, it's it's really occurred to me that... uh. There's there's really not that many major guide videos for Dead by Daylight. Oh, I mean, at least not by like, like, at least not like super in depth. You know, sometimes there are, but it's mostly just like commentary kind of stuff. I I, I think I've I think I found like a small market for it. You know, it's interesting because I don't I really don't see that many. I, I see some, but just not a whole lot of how to play these certain killers. And I I feel I feel happy that I can find that I can find that that little niche that I do. Because, let's be perfectly honest, I'm not great at that many video games, you know? I can play some pretty well. I think I'm pretty good at games like For Honor, and I think I'm I think I'm pretty good at Dead by Daylight. But, you know, PUBG, League, things like that, I'm not that great at. I'm really not. I'm just kind of a dude who plays them because I enjoy them. Um, but, uh, so that's why most of the times those games I play are mainly because uh, I make those guy videos on. That's why they're kind of that comedic uh with guide you know like you learn a little bit but it's mainly for the jokes but you learn some i feel like dead by daylight's a little bit more knowledge than uh than not mainly because like i said before i think i'm pretty damn good at dead by daylight actually like if you ever see if you ever watch my, my twitch streams uh it's a bike probably should grab that um you ever watch my twitch streams you ever see me play the doctor the doctor I, i'm a fucking i will never i never talk shit on my doctor my doctor will set people ablaze he is something else i love that character god he's so fun and he's so anti-fun for everyone else too god he makes people hate themselves i thought i heard somebody somebody down here hmm you're giving me the heebies is that a guy Wait, that's a bike. Ah, oh, shit. There's a bike. That means there's a guy. What the hell? Did bro dude jump off? What are you doing, bro dude? What the heck? Oh shit. That's a car. Car 98K, I mean. Oh fuck. Mm. 
I have a lot of spare bandages for a reason. Okay, that was a bad, that was a bad thing. That was bad. That was very bad. See, I'm not anywhere near good enough at PUBG to do PUBG guys, because if I were to do anything PUBG guide related, it'd probably be guns. And, and really, you've already got someone like Drifter for that kind of stuff. You know, he's already got those really good in-depth videos and shit. And I'm not good enough for that kind of crap. Plus, God, it's it's too difficult to uh to get PUBG footage, you know? Like, like, imagine what you've got to do. Oh. Thought I heard somebody. Imagine what you've got to do to get PUBG footage, specifically, like, certain guns. Like, that sucks. That is far from enjoyable. I'm gonna have to swim across this area. Comfortable, I do not feel with this, young Skywalker. Okay, this is bad. Anywho. Uh, yeah, it's like, I mean, PUBG is a fun, fun game, but it's not something that I would make guides on. Absolutely not. Not something that I am good enough to make guides on. Not something that I'd personally like to make guides on. But, um, uh, it, as much as I do love the game, which I am, you know, I am a PUBG partner and everything. I have that, like, really cool partner jacket and everything. It's just, uh, I'm just not good enough at the game. You know, that actually kind of reminds me, with with the, the high increase of Fortnite, it's nice to have some not good competition, because for a while, the only competition PUBG had was H1Z1, and perfectly honest, I actually do enjoy H1Z1, but they just fell behind the curve so heavily once PUBG came out. PUBG was just doing what they did better. They were just doing better. Oh, that's a boat. They were just doing better. Significantly. And it there really wasn't anything H1Z1 could do about that. They were just behind the curve. And I'm Fortnite comes out and it's just like, hey, here's our game. Here's what we like about it. Check it out. And I honestly, Epic Games really did a damn good job with it. I was I was very impressed. And you can even see it on the on the uh Twitch charts. For a while, people were like, ah. Oh, Fucking Fortnite, that PUBG copy, and then, well, I mean, obviously, we we could all we can all laugh that off because no one has the the IP of of BR games, you know. If that's the case, everyone should start blaming the Hunger Games for, you know, or but the Hunger Games should start suing people for ripping off their idea. But you you know what I mean. Um, but it, it's it really came out very well, and it's it's really I really do enjoy Fortnite. Not very good at Fortnite. Uh, I, I always thought I was better at Fortnite than I was at Pub, but I actually realized that's not necessarily the case. I think I'm actually better at Pub, uh, which just show, goes to show how absolutely crap I am at Fortnite. But, um... I saw that guy behind that tree over there. You saw that guy? I bet you, I bet you saw that guy. Zone, please. I think he sees me. No, he doesn't see me. I have no idea if I hit him or not. Oh, what the hell? What the hell did that guy come from? Okay, that didn't hit him. I am actually going to slap myself. Got him. Gonna reload this. Oh boy. Okay, I hit him twice. A little bit angry with that. That that did not kill him. I'm just gonna pop a med kit. A little bit upset that that did not kill him. Because I did hit him twice. I may have legged him. And that would definitely make a difference. But uh a little, little annoyed on that one. Alright, let me reload this gun real fast. And then pop my head out. Where is he? Oh, there he is. I see you, you little shit. Poke your fucking head out so I can take it off. Mmm. 
Things are great. What the fuck? Oh, come on, man. That's not cool at all. Ah, oh, come on, man. How do you know? Oh, I think I just got unlucky. I think he just I just got unlucky. Damn, he really landed those- he sank those shots in. Because as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, I have time to move. He's not looking anymore. But I guess he popped his head out right at the right time. Because, you know, it's not third-person mode. If it was third-person mode, then uh, it would have made a lot more sense in, in like... Let's, yeah, let's see what he's doing. Oh, so he popped a med kit. Crawled a little. Was he worried about someone behind him? Oh, yeah, it kind of was just bad timing. Uh, I shouldn't have stopped moving that much. Wait, that hit me? That... Really? Oh, well, I mean, I guess. I guess, I suppose so. Oh, well, damn, too bad. Oh, well, let's try another game. Maybe we'll have a little bit more of an eventful game after this one. Damn, that was a spooky one. That was a very spooky one. Don't know how I feel about that. But, uh... You know. It's how, it's how the game goes. It's PUBG. This is how this is how PUBG. I wonder if I get the second map, because this would be nice to have the second map when I do uh, um, do PUBG uh, 1.0. Ah, perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, I'll make sure not to turn the in-game chat on this time around. That'd be kind of a pain in the butt. So you know, moving forward with uh, with the different kinds of things going on with with myself and the channel and stuff. Uh, I've been looking a lot, to, well, actually, at the current moment, I'm not necessarily finalizing, but uh, I'm, I'm in the talks of purchasing an office, and that office uh, is going to be for, for uh, three reasons. Um, the first one is for the podcast. I would like an actual studio to do the podcast out of with actually really good um, with really good lighting, with really good cameras, with everything in between, make it some solid good-ass shit. Uh, past that... Uh, I'm also looking to run a different kind of show out of that area as well. What that show is going to be, I don't really want to tell you yet. That is going to be a secret. We're landing at the junkyard because the junkyard is for the bro tier people. Uh, oh, we're not really that close to the junkyard. I should have landed at Apollo. I'm just going to land at Apollo. That'd be fun. But, um... Uh, I'm looking to, forward to doing a different kind of show style that would be really, really fun for the uh, for everyone in the community. And then past that, uh, there was also the third thing, which is in case I ever have internet issues, you know, it, it's always nice to have a place where I can jump to, stream, and not have internet issues, just just in case, you know, maybe, maybe everything goes to shit. And uh, oh dear, maybe everything goes to shit. And I can be able to, like, okay, you know, I'll just be able to, to grab that shit and move on from there. I feel like everyone lands first before I do. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just, maybe I'm just bad at parachuting. Oh my god, I used to go to parachute school. But, yeah, so there's three different reasons for that. The office is quite exciting. I'm actually splitting it with my father, who uh, also is running his own business, or plans to run his own business out of it as well. Oh, come on. Thank you. Oh, dear. Hmm. There's someone up here, if I believe. If the sound of gunfire is to be believed. Oh dear. Oh dear. Huh. Oh dear. It would appear the young gentleman has found me. He's found a lot of people, apparently. Wait, really? He was just leaning out of the doorway? That's kind of disappointing. I thought there was more. Oh, well now I feel like kind of an idiot. I, I thought, it looked like he was firing at a lot of people. Maybe the other guy was just near me and next to my direction, or he was pre-firing. That's that's surprising. Oh, well, he had a scar, you know. Kind of just a bad start for me anyway. You know how it goes. But, 
Yeah, it's starting with The Office. Um, like I guess I said Fireside Breaking No Cuts. Uh, the Office is actually really exciting. Um, the, oh, we're back onto the regular map. Well, sucks. You don't get to see Miramar. Um, anyway, the uh, Fireside Bricky is actually very, very uh, old. Well, very, very spawned the idea of the podcast uh, with the whole, the whole thought of like, hey, I, I'd like to definitely still bring people along and still have interviews and stuff. I'd like it if the guest is a, is a bigger part of the interview than just my, uh, me speaking. But uh, at the same time, I, I'm not quite sure if people would be looking more to for me doing the podcast versus wanting to see the guest. Because guests are great and everything, but there's, you do run into a couple roadblocks. Like, how many people can I invite? How big or small are they? And then, you know, will it be for the guest, the podcast? And if it is... You know, eventually I'm going to start hitting roadblocks of people I, I bring on, you know, and then I'm going to just, I'm, you know, then I'm going to have to start paying people to come to the podcast and stuff, which, which is uh, something I, I knew was going to happen regardless. But it's still something that I was kind of th kind of thinking about, like, oh, shit, I'm going to have to get well, what if I'm going to eventually run out of people. And then I'm going to have to start paying people to join the podcast. And then after that, you know, then, we're, then you, you know, eventually you're going to run out of people. Um, well, to a point. Oh, th then you're going to be like podcast episode 170 and then, you know, you're just like, well, fuck, I don't know what to do anymore. It, it depends on how, exactly how you want to how I want to run it. Uh, it depends. It's going to be kind of difficult jumping back and forth between that idea, seeing which is the focal point And uh, not only that, but being able to keep myself down. Um, so I'm not just taking up too much because I, I, I talk a lot, as you can tell. I am a very talk. How are these people getting there before me? I, I don't understand. Uh, I'm a very talky person. Um, and being such a talky person, it will be kind of uh, interesting to see if I can keep myself in check and make sure that the guest is the one who is doing the talking. You know, Because it is the guest. They are, they are the one I am inviting to have discussions about. So, I don't know. We'll have to... Ooh, hello. We'll have to see. We will really have to see. Oh my. You know, I wonder if anyone over there even has any guns. I'm gonna go see if I can kill somebody. This be the house. This is not the house. Oh, that's the house. Come on, poke your head out. Poke your head out. Do it. You son of a beach. There they are. All right. I was about to say, I had a feeling that that was the person because they had the, the PUBG trench coat. Okay. Well, that's a nice start. I normally wouldn't pop a med kit, but, uh, at this point, I don't really have anything else to use. All right. Well, hey, you know. Oh, shit. Damn it. God, I hate the AK. Despise this weapon. Recoil and shit. And my bad aim. Those two things do not mix well. Oh man, I almost got my ass handed to me because that thing where if you aim too close to the, uh, um, you know, too close to the wall, you know what I mean? It just like, it like puts your gun down. That almost killed me. Glad it didn't. That would have thoroughly sucked. Oh, there's still people here. Poor guy found an AX scope. We can't even use it. 
Because they don't let you use AX scopes on the M16 anymore. For God knows what reason. There's a dead guy up here. Oh! I know what you can use the AX scope on, though. Oh, ho, ho. Sweet. Probably stick with the AK, though, because I'm close range. Dang. That's cool. That's some cool shit. Huh. A little worried. I don't like my odds. I just don't like being out in the open. I don't like anything about this. I want to get to the point where I where I can be in a safe spot and not being shot at. Or have the possibility of being shot at. So I can continue my conversation about video games and podcasts and the inclusion of new shit on the channel. Frying pan. Red dot. There we go. I heard gunfire from this direction. I'm curious as to where specifically it came from. Hmm. Oh, well. Oh, hey, look at that. All right. Oh, man. I found him. He was outside, and he shot me dead. Damn it. Oh, I knew he was still around. All the doors were closed and shit, so... Damn, oh well. Oh well, it's whatever. Anyway, it ate the standard PUBG stuff. I got a few kills. It was fun, you know? It was a good time. I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself. Damn, I had an AR suppressor and a Mini-14. Ah, damn. You know how things go. You know how things go. Anyway... Moving forward with the whole podcast thing and everything, but that, that's like a, that's like kind of the big number one thing I want to do next. But like I said, but like before I mentioned a couple of oh, same map before I mentioned a couple of times before is that I really want to be able to get um get like well I want to get my series done. You know, I want to finish all of my series. That has always been a big step for me. Uh, or at least now recently, because I, I don't like doing something and then not finishing it. And I did that for a while. And for me, it's kind of like finishing off the old and bringing in the new, you know? Uh, for, like, this is me finishing off the old style of, of stuff that I did. I just, I'm finishing off the silver guys, which are just the, the weirdest, most w bullshit, meme -y crap you'll ever see. I, so if you've ever watched old silver guides and you're thinking like, what the fuck are these new things? Hey, that's just, you, this is normal. This is absolutely normal. This is completely 100% normal. So don't expect, uh, don't expect anything normal in, in, uh, or anything like actually regular when it comes to those videos. I like the way these guns sound. They sound very nice. But, so, and those are almost done. I only have one gun left. That's the op. Once the op is done, there's none left. I am finished. And then every single gun in CSGO has been done. Then, of course, I finished up the uh, mono or the Pilot Academy. I had to do the Monarch Guide for that video. Um, so that once the... Oh, God, George Paul. Uh, once the Pilot Academy videos are all... Or once the Pilot Academy videos were all finished, then, you know, after that, it just comes down to uh, finishing up the one trick guides. Now, of course, I did start two new series, which were the uh, the Warframe Fast Frames as well as the Dead by Daily Case Files, but those are more of like some new ship that are also kind of getting close to being finished. I just released the sixth episode of the Dead by Daylight one, which is the Hag. So it means we've done the Trapper, um, the Shape, the, the Doctor, the Huntress, the Wraith, and the Hag. All we have left are Billy, Leatherface, the Nurse, and Freddy, I believe. I think that's I think that's everybody. And then you're and then of course if they add any new killer killers, then I also have to do those. But for the time being, though, that's all of them. Uh, and then I'm done with that. 
Warframe is going to take a little bit longer because there's a lot of frames, but at the same time, I'm also, you know, I'm also doing, like, you know, they're, they're very fast. They're easy. I can, knock, I can knock, like, half of them out probably in a week if I wanted to because um, they're just not very hard to do. They're very fun. They're fast. They're fun. You know, I enjoy them because they're just, you know, they're, they're fast and they're meme -y. That's all I really wanted them to be, and I'm and I'm so okay with the fact that that's what they stay stay as. But you see, once those are all done, I still have Overwatch, which I'm currently doing. Um, that takes a little bit of time. Uh, nat naturally, Overwatch is a little bit more difficult than the uh, than the rest. Ooh, M416. Naturally, Overwatch is a bit more difficult because there's a lot to uh, to do there. But I'm not gonna. I'm actually gonna take this AK. But uh, there's naturally a lot more to do in, in Overwatch. There are a lot more characters and stuff. and So because of that, I've got to go ahead and work to finish all those. That one will take a little bit more time. I'm only like halfway done with, the, with that series. And Overwatch does take kind of a bit of time. Uh, and then, of course, there's the uh, So You Want to Mains. And that, that's, uh, that's a bit of something else. That, that's one where that those take by far, the hard, uh, by far the most time. And they're the hardest to make. And... Uh, those are the ones that I, I'm pretty positive will never be finished just because they just take too long and there's too many characters in that game. Uh, I am considering uh, hiring an editor for those videos because if I could start throwing out maybe one of those videos a week um, because I, all I got to do is write the script and... Um, well, yeah, all I have to do is write the script, say the lines, and get the footage. Once those three things are done, I'm, I'm, I'm golden. I'm fine. Once those three things are done, I don't have to, like I just throw all the stuff to the ed to the editor, and uh, a local man puts a uh, puts a nice nice bricky spin on it. I uh, I pay him, of course, because you know we're not like certain people. You know, we pay our editors and we pay our editors in this chat, but um, you know, and then uh, and then things are good. And then, I mean, obviously, it's not going to be super easy for him because it's a long video and stuff, but. Hell, if I could do that, I could probably knock one of those out every two weeks, maybe even faster, because uh, all I gotta do is click the footage and write the script. And the script does take quite some time, but the main the main issue for me has always been editing. The editing is like half the process. Uh oh. Eh. But uh, that is like half that is like half the process uh, is doing the editing and stuff. So I, I might be able to. And, and to be honest, like there's not like the Soyo domains have a huge specific bricky feel to them. At the most part, there are the the bricky parts of it, which are of course, um, you know the. But how do I play X character? And th those are things that I probably just tell them like, hey, put this put this meme in because I want this I want this specific meme to be a part of the video. Dude, that that's a totally different thing. Being able to do that, man. I man, I just realized I said that I was the thing I was getting better at PUBG, but I'm I'm playing like absolute shit today. Oh well, you know how you know how it goes. No, no one no one watches me because I think I'm good. Um, but that is kind of a. That's kind of the thought process. Maybe I, I, I might be able to do something like that. That might be kind of fun. It might be easier to be able to uh, just kind of have have a, an editor work on that stuff. You know, I realize I realize why people hire editors. Obviously, it's a time saving thing. But there's there's a couple of things that you really have to. Oh my god. Nah. Yeah. Fuck, is there a car on this road? I want it. I want it. I want it. Shit, there's no car on this road. But that guy in the bike. Oh, he wants it. Go get him, champ. Go get him, champ. God damn it. God damn it. Oh, well. Um, no, the uh, I, I get why people start hiring editors. Because for a while, I was like, man, I can't hire an editor. Because like I, I got to do, like, it's me. You know, it's my kind of stuff. But I realized you don't really lose that. 
I thought you might lose that kind of you you portion if you hire an editor, but you really don't. Because that's like half the, the battle is finding an editor that gets your humor, that understands your humor. And if, if any of you have noticed in the Dead by Daylight stuff, he gets my humor pretty well. Good old, good old man, Beer Box Gaming. A very, very nice guy, awesome editor. Edited a lot of um, uh, Matt's videos for a while, but and still kind of does sometimes. But he, he he gets my stuff. He gets my jokes. He and he understands how to make it really fit in the video. And uh, eventually, like as time progresses, you kind of got to make your content better. And I'm I'm not a good editor. I'm not. I'm just not a good editor. I'm bad at editing. I'm not. I'm not good at editing. I don't have the patience. I, I'm not. I don't under, understand the tricks. I'm just not a great editor in general, and because of that, uh, but because of that, like I do so many just standard gameplay commentary videos because I fucking hate editing. But if I can get somebody who understands my humor, and they can not only make it so that the videos are higher quality, but still me, it's like the best of both worlds. You up the quality, you keep it you, and then not only that, but you and not only that, but you reinvigorate your love for the game. Like, I don't want to play a lot of league anymore. I I like I love league, but I'm tired of fucking having to play it so I can just keep editing goddamn videos. It sucks ass. I am not a fan. Where's that gunfire coming from? God damn, they they literally oh there they are. But um, yeah, it's and so then like you know I just I'm excited because I really been like been liking playing Dead, uh, Dead by Daylight lately because I just had to get footage. It's like all right, let's do it, let's get footage. You know I get to like what do I gotta do? I write a script, I say the script, and then I play a crap load of games as the nurse. Oh there they are. Or, or, well, Nurse is next, but, um, you know, I play a crap load games with the Nurse, the Hag, the Wraith, whoever. And I'm just like, all right, that that's it. Oh, my God. Come on, dudes. Gets in a freaking vehicle. You found me. This is bad. Ow. I have an idea. Fuck. Aha! Smoke grenades. I'm scared. Okay. I think I'll be fine. I think I'll be okay. Anyway, as I was saying, um, yeah, it really, it really ends up working out better, and I, and I get it now because he, a lot of times, especially something that I think everyone can agree with, is that if it doesn't look like you're having fun, the video suffers. You know, if I if I'm playing a game and I'm not enjoying myself while playing that game, the video will suffer. The video will not be as good. And if I'm just playing League over and over again and over again and over again, and I'm playing the same shit over again, and I have to edit that goddamn shit so much, I'm, I'm tired, I'm not having fun, I'm not enjoying myself. But if I were to perhaps, you know, just play the game for the hell of it and just do it and not have to worry about that kind of stuff, I think it, things might change. And the videos might be better. And that's what I'm excited about. That's what I'm excited to do. That's what I'm excited to see. So that that's the hope. That, that is that is the hope in this in this situation. You know? For a while I thought it was like doing it yourself was just the way to go for a while. And I guess it kind of is in the beginning because you know you couldn't really afford editors. At least I couldn't afford editors. Um, because you know, you just you kind of just couldn't. But now that time has progressed, now that time has passed, I, I get it now. I get why. And it's a good reason. 
It's a very good reason. And I'm happy for it. I'm happy for that for that opportunity to be like, all right, now is the time. This this will not only make me enjoy the job more, but it'll make it into better content and it'll make me feel better about it. That's it's a very, very good addition. I'm waiting for that Car 98 guy to arrive, but I can't find him. I mean, this this video obviously I don't need an editor for because I'm just talking. Talking and walking is Fireside Bricky, of course. But it, it, I don't know, it's, things make more sense now. And it feels good. It feels very good. I, I'm like, it's like, like I've learned a new section of YouTube. You know, I, now I get why people have editor. I just, I just get it now. I get it. It just makes sense to me. I don't know, I don't know why it's, I struggled so hard with um, that, with making sense of that, but uh, uh, I did. And now things are things can be can be good because you know now you can actually like yeah I can hire people now you know I actually have the money to hire people which is which makes me which makes me happy because like I hire an editor I hire a thumbnail artist and you know I have people making my new channel art as you saw I have a new channel uh, logo and image and, which I think is super cool looking like they they nailed that forehead they nailed that forehead man they they did perfect they nailed that. Forehead. It's wonderful to, to see. And it, it turns... Oh, hello. Thank you very much. It turns everything on its head. When... I, I can see why. Because you gotta, you gotta up that quality eventually. Now, there are some people who get away with just kind of like... Silly, same, same old uh, commentary over and over again. People like Critical. You know, Critical has been doing the same thing for God knows how long. And God damn it, has, has it worked? He just does it. He just makes his video, you know? Just talking. No thumbnails, nothing. It's just, it's just critical, you know? He just does his thing. But uh, that's, uh, you know, he, he gets away with it. People like, you know, people like him get away with it. But everyone, I can see quality improvements. Things got to bump up. Things have got to bump up. And uh, that, that quality improvements comes with different art, different editors, and on and so forth. See, eventually it becomes worth it, you know? If I have to spend $30 to get, like, a quick little thumbnail image, uh, it, it, back in the day it wasn't worth it because I was making 30 bucks. But nowadays it's worth it because uh, I can, you know, I can make back that money because my channel's larger. You know, most of my thumbnails, as you can tell, are kind of shit because I make them. Because <laughs> I make most of my thumbnails. In fact, I still do make most of my thumbnails when it comes to, uh, um, I, 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 I get the image, but I still put it together. I still... Put like the hag, and but the the image of of the hag with the little, little pizza Dwight is not me, of course. But I, I get the image, and I still throw everything on it. Should hire someone to fix that though, because I'm not good at that at all, at all. Really should have someone fix that. Oh, you know what? Actually, that makes me want to segue real fast into some other topic. Um, a little bit ago, there was a small video on the. Uh, on, on one of the most unholy of areas, the, the League of Legends subreddit. Um, and that video uh, had it, was talking about how League content isn't as it was. And personally, I really didn't like the video. I thought it was a lot of like uh, uh, sucking the dick of Donkey a lot. Um, it was a lot of like, man, when Donkey was banned, everything just went to hell. Every, everyone scattered like the wind. No one makes the good content anymore. I was like, Stop, but I mean, obviously I'm paraphrasing. But you know, I'm, I'm giving the guy a lot more shit than he probably deserves. But um, it was very, it was very like stuck in the past with a lot of outdated opinions. But there was something I wanted to touch on because I do hear this a lot. All the only league content you see nowadays is is stream highlights and stuff. And there's two things you've got to got to understand when it comes to that it comes to those things. Uh, when it comes to not only league content in general, but why stream highlights are so popular. Uh, why do you think the 10 minute video became such a huge thing? Why do you think the 10 minute video became such a massive, massive part of YouTube? It's not because 10 minute videos are better or necessarily are able to, um, uh... wow, you landed a lot of hits. That's kind of impressed. I'm actually very impressed. He landed a lot of shots. Wow, he landed a lot of shots, actually. What? 
in the world? What's that? Well, this probably was my last game for the video, but all I was going to say is blame YouTube, don't blame the people. Don't blame the people who put put the fucking clickbait into the into the games, but oh, he was down the hill. Oh, that's where he was. Ah, that sneaky boy. The sneakiest of boys. Damn. Sneaky boy. Anyway, what I was saying is is don't blame don't blame people for putting out uh, you know, OMG one shot 1000 AP Nar Cappuccino. Don't blame them for that. Blame YouTube for it. You know, 10 minutes are, are big videos because you can put a mid-roll ad in there and it, they make literally double the money. Uh, that's the whole point of what makes it so good. I mean, this video is like 60 minutes or 55 minutes long and I'm probably going to put two mid-roll ads in it because it's so freaking long. And, you know, it, it's just kind of worth it. And generally there's a thing where like if you put two, but if they watch the first, they won't watch the second. It's some weird YouTube thing. But either way, or maybe, I don't quite remember. It's a long video um, and it doesn't get a lot of views. So, you know, got to make it up somehow. But, you know, that's the thing is like, you really can't, you know, it's the thing with clickbait. Clickbait works, clickbait works because keep, people keep fucking clicking on it. If the, the one shot Nar Cappuccino thing gets 1.5 million views for 10 minutes of recycled stream footage and goddamn actual champion spotlight, glorious guide, so you want to main gets 1.5 million views after 10 months because, uh, after 10 months of being on there versus a week and, uh, took me a hundred hours to make. I'm sorry, but that that's not that's not a you know OMG what's wrong with these people making these stream highs? That's just them being smarter but financially. It's just a better business decision. Like why the fuck would I want to do this? Why would I want to spend that much time on videos like that when they just won't make anything when I could just put out like recycled stream footage? It's not it's not a where'd all the good YouTube go uh, content go? It's the fact that pe people y'all are asking why is it all fucking stream highlights? And then you keep clicking on those stream highlights. If they didn't get one and a half million views, they wouldn't be made. But because YouTube likes that stuff, because it's YouTube prefers quantity over quality, and because people keep clicking on it, it's what's going to happen. And it's not the fault of the YouTuber, they're just playing the game. Hustle is hustle. But if you're asking where it went, hey, that, that's where it went. It's just not a... It's just... Not a fun thing to do, having to work so hard on something that doesn't get as much as, as recycled stream footage. It sucks, but it's the way YouTube is, and I've come to accept it. But if you're asking where it all went, that's where it all went. All right, not the happiest note to end on, but hey, you know, that's what happens. I make guy videos because I like making guy videos, not because they're profitable. If, if I wanted to, I'd, I'd make nothing but fucking... Uh, um, nothing but gameplay commentary, 15 minute videos for the rest of my life and I'd cash in. But I like guide videos because guide videos are fun. I enjoy them. Why do you think I got so many guides going on right now? Anyway, this has been myself, Bricky, with Player Unknown's Battlegrounds 1.0, Fireside Bricky, of course. And like with every Fireside Bricky, if you watched all the way to the end, go ahead and, and throw in that chat in the comments section down below. Cappuccino, PUBG Arena. Brick Arena, give me the suck. All right, bye-bye.